Hello, everyone. This is Maria Horat with Gold Country Properties. And today we'll be discussing a very important topic uh, that may, may impact many individuals who have real estate. So today I'm joined by James Callejas. He is a 1031 exchange expert and vice president at IPX 1031. Hello, James. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Happy Friday. Thank you. Thank you so much. So can you walk us first um, uh, through the Biden administration proposed budget as it relates to 1031 exchange? I guess maybe the, the first step would be to go over what 1031 exchange is and how that benefits whoever wants. Sure. So the Internal Revenue Code 1031 has been around for over 100 years, 103 years to be exact. And it's really the greatest wealth building tool that exists out there because it allows you to sell an asset that's appreciated significantly without having to realize capital gains tax. And so the way it would work for real estate and for realtors and for investors is this is only for investment property and it allows you to sell a piece of investment property. And instead of paying capital gains tax, all you have to do is buy another piece of investment property or properties and follow certain guidelines. And if you do so, you'll pay absolutely zero in capital gains tax. So this is for the person that has owned an investment property for a number of years, and it no longer makes sense. And they no longer like it. Maybe it's they hate being a landlord or the cash flow isn't good, or it's in the state of California and subject to rent control, whatever the reason may be, there's so many different reasons why the property no longer makes sense. Mm -hmm. But paying the taxes just really isn't an option for many people because it's so high. But the 1031 exchange allows you to unload a property that no longer makes sense into a superior piece of investment property. So you get rid of something that could be a nightmare and you buy something that could be a dream come true. So this code that's been around for so long is used by all real estate investors to maximize their real estate portfolio and continuously build wealth within their real estate portfolio. So it is, an, it is a huge tool that has been used for over 100 years to just truly stimulate growth within the real estate community and the economy overall. So uh, this proposed budget is intended to, part of it is very long, but part of it is to repeal this 1031 exchange section. Um, according to uh, the administration, they claim that it will, quote, close the loopholes in the tax code, end quote, and they claim basically that it will level the playing field by treating the sale of a, a real property like any other sale. So what are your thoughts on this? I think they couldn't be more wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the funny thing is, Maria, is that I've been doing this for 26 years and every president that comes into office or is running for office has tried to limit or eliminate the 1031 exchange. We have been in front of congressmen for probably the last 12 years on a consistent basis, educating them and letting them understand what the 1031 exchange truly does to the economy. Because you have to look at it from a different perspective. They think that if you get rid of the 1031 exchange, people will continue to sell their real estate assets and pay all of these taxes. The reality is, if you get rid of the 1031 exchange, people will hold on to the properties. They will not sell their properties for the most part, and they won't pay these high capital gains tax. It makes no sense to get rid of a wealth building machine that also provides a lot of money to the economy, increase taxes and think that people are just going to sell and pay the piper. That's not how it works. Now, when you think of a 1031 exchange and many people think it's a loophole, it's not a loophole because when you sell a piece of investment property, you got to look at it a couple of different ways. There are many different people that get paid. Before selling the asset, you usually fix it up. So you're going to have a lot of vendors out there, whether it be painting, whether it be construction, whether it be landscaping of some sort, there are many things that are done to a property before it's sold. Then it's put on the market by a realtor that gets paid. 
Then you're going to have inspections that are done, appraisals that are done, escrow that's opened, 1031 exchange people that get into the mix. So you're having so many different vendors that are involved with just the sale. What about the buyer? When the buyer buys the property, they're going to fix the property to the way that they want it. And they're also going to have other people involved within this transaction. And as a matter of fact, the person that sold the property because of Prop 13, their property taxes are significantly low. And the buyer is going to start paying property taxes at current market value numbers. So there'll be an increase in property taxes, transfer tax, all these vendors getting paid within the transaction. Oh, and by the way, the seller has to buy another piece of real estate and you're going to have the same equation going over again. Now their property taxes have increased and all of these vendors keep getting paid. So all of this money is going to into the economy. It stimulates growth. Mm -hmm. And when you get rid of something like this, people just don't sell. And if they don't sell, then all of these things don't happen. So you'll have property taxes remaining at a lower number. You'll have no transfer tax, no county tax, no escrow fees, mm -hmm. no appraisers, no inspectors, no lenders, no realtors, no 1031, no tax advisors, no real estate attorneys. So many different players are not involved. We actually hired Ernst & Young to do a study on exactly what would happen if the 1031 exchange were to be taken away. It would kill commercial real estate because all commercial real estate qualifies for a 1031 exchange. And it's already pretty much in the in the in the coffin, commercial real estate in, in a lot of areas. Yeah. And, and when you get rid of the 1031 exchange, then the the industries that didn't get hit hard by by the um, the onslaught of COVID and other reasons. Uh, the industrial assets and the agricultural assets and some of the multifamily assets and self-storage assets that made a lot of money, those investors probably won't sell when they know they have to give up 30 to 40% of every dollar of gain. So getting rid of the 1031 exchange would put real estate in a recession, would put the economy in somewhat of a recession as well. There is nothing good about getting rid of the 1031 exchange because they didn't do the research. They didn't do the homework in their proposal. They just throw a lot of things into the proposal that they think will generate tax dollars. And some of those things don't make sense. This is one of those things. You take 1031 exchange and get rid of it. And it is going to be very, very bad. And we don't even want to think of something like that happening. And every single time we see something like this, we are very proactive in attacking to make sure that it doesn't. And I'd say over 95% of the congressmen are very pro 1031. So this is something that we need to make sure is taken out of any proposal, whether it's Democratic, whether it's Republican, it doesn't matter what the party is. We wanna make sure that that part is taken out. Yeah. And what do you think about, oh, what about the um, exclusion for the sale of primary residences? Was that touched on, on that? So there's been talk about increasing that to instead of two thousand five hundred, it would be five hundred one million dollars. Personally, I don't think that it is going to get passed, and here's the reason why: being in the state of California, we're very pro extending these numbers, but the majority of the nation doesn't see tremendous amounts of appreciation like the coasts do and certain areas do. So I think the overwhelming numbers of people that don't care about getting these numbers increased will probably outweigh the people that want to get it increased. So sadly, uh, Maria, I don't think that it will be increased, but only time will tell. And that's been on the ticket for a while. 1031 repealing, it's been on the ticket for a while. You know, there are many organizations out there that unite CAR, NAR, CCIM, SFAR. Um, there, there is over 50 organizations that come together to make sure things like this don't happen. And we visit our local congressmen. We're in Washington, D.C. We have actually have a call to action. Um, and whenever you want, I can tell you exactly what needs to be done. Yeah. You can easily go to our website and hit a button called action. And what it does is it 
it already automatically will generate a letter to your congressman to not change 1031 in any way. All you have to do is put your name and address and it'll go to your local congressman. So we're we're already starting that process. We've done this before. The congressmen are, are aware of it. We've already sent out about, I think it's 12,000 letters um, just in the last two weeks. And we're going to continue with this and we'll continue marching forward, regardless of who is elected president in November. And I, I just, uh, a scenario comes to my mind about someone who may have investment properties and they have, uh, you know, how they investors, they take a loan on their equity, right, to purchase more investments. Mm -hmm. And so how that's going to affect uh, if this gets passed, they will have loans on these properties, you know, uh, and then they won't be able to sell it because if they sell it, they have to. They can't, they can't because, and when, when you, when you do something like that, and, and and this is a misconception in 1031 land, oh, I'll refinance and use the money somewhere else. And I only have to reinvest the equity. No, in a 1031 exchange, you have to reinvest all of the proceeds yeah. and replace all of the debt. Mm -hmm. in order to be in a position to pay zero in capital gains tax. But let's take that example. Let's say you bought it for 200000 and today it's worth a million and you have a large $800,000 gain. But let's say over the years you have debt that equates to 600000 The property is worth a million. If you were to sell it and do a 1031 exchange, you'd have 400000 coming out. That'd be your down payment. And you'd buy something else for a million, either bringing in cash or getting a loan to get to that number or higher. But what if the 1031 exchange is gone and you sell that property and now you have 400,000 in cash coming out, but your gain is 800,000. At the end of the day, you're going to be ending up with pennies or you won't have enough cash to pay the capital gains tax. It's really scary for people that refinanced assets looking to sell, can't do a 1031 exchange and can't afford to pay the taxes. So there's so many different levels to this onion or layers to this onion that we could unravel that make no sense to change the 1031 exchange in any way. Yeah, another scenario, if you have an investment property that the uh, tenants are not paying the rent, and you have that same situation you're talking about, you're toast. <laughs> you're, you're toast. And like well, we saw that in COVID, right? There was a moratorium yeah. in so many different areas when people stopped paying rent. And if you couldn't sell it and exchange into something else, um, you're stuck with something that's going to go underwater and you might get foreclosed on. I mean, there's just so many different things about that that doesn't make sense. You need to attack things that do make sense. Mm -hmm. Something that stimulates the economy should not be touched. Exactly. Well, there's a whole thing about it, but I think we can talk about it some other time. Um, another proposal out there is the 25% uh, tax on unrealized gain. Uh, they say it's only going to be for the... I don't even know how they're going to do that, to be honest. Some of the things they put out there are, are really crazy. And what if the property were to go down in value in the future? Are they going to pay you back? Of so not. like, I yeah. mean, of course not, right? So these, these proposals really don't make any kind of sense. And if you look at uh, Prop 33, that's going to um, change rent control oh, yeah. in, 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 the, uh, in, in the state of California in a, in a very wicked way, anybody yeah. who's a landlord um, could be in a really bad position. So I think what we, what we should really take from today's Zoom podcast, whatever we're calling it nowadays, yeah. is is that you really need to read what is being proposed and understand it before you make a decision. I truly believe getting rid of the 1031 exchange will make situations extremely worse yeah. uh, and will stagnate our economy. Uh, I truly believe that if you were to vote yes on, on Proposition 33, it's going to create a mess for anybody that's in the real estate industry or owns real estate. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's very unfair. Um, Proposition 33, again, that's the rain control for the entire state. So you can the look, entire at, state and, and look it, at Oakland and San Jose and these cities. Have they accomplished anything where homelessness is at an no, old? No. And, and, and the problem is if you own the properties in these areas and something like that gets passed, um, it, it also impacts evicting people that are not paying. So you're basically in a really, really bad position. So my word of advice is to read up a little bit on it, ask questions, yes. and let's make the right decisions so that bad things don't get passed because it's really hard to get something repealed once it's in play. Yeah. And, and you think about why are they trying to pass all these measures? It must be some kind of an agenda because I, I, I tend there's, to... 
that. There's always an agenda. Yeah. There's always an agenda. And yeah. a lot of the time the agenda is not good. So, okay. you know, ask, ask somebody who knows what it is instead of just going and voting um, without the knowledge behind what you're, what you're voting for. Absolutely. Do you have a screen that you can share so people can see what um, for them to contact the representatives or I can even put a link on the description as well? Um, I, I would put the link to okay. my website um, backslash Callejas. Go to my go to my page and um, there, there's things that you can watch to learn and there's things that you can do. Um, at least to preserve the 1031 exchange and get letters out to your local congressman. Yes, that, that's great advice. And if anyone needs to do a 1031 exchange, so the process is uh, once you have to have a, a title company and a 1031 exchange company um, handle it. So I will have his information below. So if you are in the process of or thinking about selling an investment property, uh, feel free to give James a call. He's excellent. He's helped me with uh, my own situation uh, with real estate and help many others. So I want to thank you, James, uh, for being here today. And my pleasure. Let's follow up later. See yeah. And, and Maria, I wanted to just, I talk more people out of doing the 1031 exchange. So if it doesn't make sense, I don't want it. What I would recommend is prior to listing the property for sale, have a three to five minute conversation with me just to make sure it qualifies for what you want to do. Exactly. Because the last thing you want to do is list a property for sale, get in the contract and say, I'm ready. And it doesn't work for you. That's exactly right. Yes. You don't want to be in that situation. No. And that <laughs> happens a lot. And, and it could be a number of different reasons. Um, and, and, and to me, it's, I'm going to ask you probably like three to five questions. And based on those answers, I'll let you know if you're ready or not, or it doesn't qualify or it does. And that's all that we do here. We try to help. And if, if there's a way we can facilitate the exchange, awesome. If not, doesn't matter. There's all kinds of people out there that need help. We only want to help the ones that need it. Exactly. You want to definitely save your time and your money uh, yeah. while you're thinking about doing any of these things. Okay. Agreed. Thank you so much, James. And we'll check back soon. Sounds good. Have a nice weekend. You, you too. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.